And on your warm-up sheet, what I want you to actually write is what is a topographic map anyway? Adriana Smythe is new at MSAT, the Marin School of Arts and Technology. So are the rest of her fellow teachers and all the students. See if the population nearby uses the water. This charter school in Novato, California, is just one of many schools catching on to the benefits of a project-based learning curriculum. There are two sensors attached to the Palm Pilot right now. It's In this quarter's project, students have 12 two. weeks to evaluate the health of their local watershed by studying a small creek that runs through the campus. There's a cliche about schools that when the teachers come to school, they're all bright and cheery, and the kids kind of drag in. And then the end of the school day happens, and the kids run out, and the teachers are dragging. Well, if we're doing project-based learning the right way, that turns around. The kids are tired. They should be really worn out by the end of the day because they should have been doing the work of learning. But as the teachers are finding out, implementing a new project at a new school will require learning on their part as well. At this three-hour meeting, teachers develop a driving question, which is intended to help students focus in on the theme of watershed. I heard that this was getting close. What can we learn from the study of watersheds about systems and interconnectedness. To design and come up with a final driving question requires revision, some back and forth, and brainstorming. I mean, what's wrong with driving questions like, what is the state of the watershed at IVC, and how does that compare to other watersheds in the Bay Area? You know, question mark. But we also want them to understand the watershed symbolically as something more mm -hmm. than a stream and the area mm -hmm. surrounding it. I thought that conversation was really rich and powerful in our development as a team and, our, and for the teachers' understanding of developing projects. What we need to do today is really formalize our ideas about what watersheds are and what this project is about. One of the students in that particular class, the first time I ever mentioned that we were going to do this watershed project, he said, he said, where's the shed? It ranges from that level to, to kids that have done a watershed study before and they're quite informed and quite savvy about what's involved. And that's one of the big challenges of teaching here. Many of you are not really accustomed to using topographic maps. So I want to just kind of watch you as you try to find where we are on this map and where our watershed might be. It really helps to think of projects in the sense that you're going to plan backwards. Yeah, so you're going to think about what you want the outcomes to be, and you're going to plan backwards by thinking about who your students are, what they need to know, what you need to teach them, and the skills that you think students should learn during this project. Take your temperature probe, and let's have one group do the pool and one group do the Riffley area up there. After working in the field, Cold students water. usually take data back to the mm -hmm. science lab mm -hmm. for analysis. Now, let's just record our data. At MSAT, they also take it back to their digital media class, where instructor Tony Harris is helping them create news reports on the health of their watershed. Today we go live in the field for an exclusive watershed report with their very own Alex Hulkins and Escobar. twice as loud. You'll feel like you're screaming, Jesse. <laughs> they really have to show that they've mastered the content and understand the information they're trying to convey to the audience. The Petaluma River is a very important part of Sonoma County and to the people of Petaluma. A big focus on the project was a news report using everything they had learned with the technology all year and combining that with their presentation skills and uh, coming out with a real solid professional newscast. I'm Jesse Young. And I'm Rod Bastenmeyer. Today we go live in the field for an exclusive watershed report with the very own Alex Culkins and Yvette Escobar. You just don't turn students loose in the classroom to do whatever they might want to do. This isn't pure discovery learning. It's really a method of uh, structuring projects and you very carefully guide students through the whole process. Have you done the narration yet? Um, we haven't recorded. You're going to get to that today? Mm -hmm. i try. Okay. I'm afraid too many teachers think going into this well, this will be pretty easy, you know. We're, we're turning so much of this over to the kids. But some days it's like herding cats. 
Last time you guys were in here, you were to have completed the watershed uh, presentations. How many people in here are actually complete? Raise your hands. <laughs> There's just a lot going on, and if you don't keep track of the groups, they'll shut down on you. They'll get behind, then they get overwhelmed, then they shut down. The sound studio froze and you can't get it working. What should we do? The great advantage of doing a project is you can build in the content and the assessment of that content, but you can also intentionally plan how to teach students skills. You can teach students to collaborate. Is this in? Yes. You can teach students to do public speaking. You would have to keep me a secret, and I don't think you can. You can teach students to practice their self-management skills, their time and task skills, the kinds of skills that students really need in the real world, but oftentimes don't have a chance to learn in the classroom. And welcome to our presentation on watersheds, more specifically stream organisms. The 12-week watershed study watershed culminates in an exhibition night, where students present the findings of their research to an audience of experts, parents, teachers, and fellow students. Virtually everything in a watershed is affected by something else. We have kind of a standard presentation rubric. They know they're being assessed on everything from posture, eye contact, uh, volume, pitch in their voice, to content knowledge, uh, command of their topic. The basic hypothesis that we're testing is that the IBC watershed is a fully functional natural system. At the end of the project, students and teachers use a debrief session to give self-evaluations and talk about what they've learned. We'll run through what worked during the project, what didn't work during the project. One of the best findings in educational research is reflection is equated with retention. That is, when you think about what you've done and you think about what you learned, it's much more likely to stay with you. Let's start with what worked. I think this watershed project has been like the biggest example of how it's good to work together in groups and how successful it can be. I would actually have to say that our group didn't work very well together and that we didn't manage our time wisely and it seemed like we worked better by ourselves. I just want to see them really arrive at a place where they take pride in what they've done. Once they feel that way, they're going to want to replicate the feeling. They're going to want to do it again and that that's going to invest them in a way they've never been invested in their education. Signing off, I'm Rod Bastenmeier. And I'm Jesse Young. Good night. And have a pleasant tomorrow.